I want to introduce a concept, which I came close to introducing a concept in an article I wrote earlier this year, but I want to directly introduce it now. An article I wrote on May 3, I wrote it for seminary and uh, put it on my website on May 3. It's called Sin, Nothingness, The Liar Paradox, and the Contamination of Creation. I want to get this on YouTube, but I just haven't had time. I want to discuss a subtopic in there much more directly that was implied in the article, which is much more direct. And let me just go right to the point. The idea is that free will is evil. It is sin, evil, and nothingness. Let me introduce you to a really big shock that I've learned recently. Uh, I studied the book of Romans all summer, and that's where the recent paper on uh, God's pre-election knowledge of the soul came from, from that study. Let me let you know something I learned this summer. There's not a single verse in the Bible that refers to free will or free choice of humanity. Okay, it refers to us making choices, which is not free choice or free will. Free choice means you do it. Free will, as philosophers define, the definition of free will is it comes from you. You originate it uncaused in your consciousness. Okay, if I make a choice, it may or may not be from me. It may be from God. Or if I was unsaved and a sinner, maybe it would be from Satan. It's not my free choice. Free will refers to you doing it. There's no verses that say you made the choice, you originated the choice, it comes from you anywhere in the Bible. Go to Google and try to find a verse on free will choice or free will in the Bible. It can't be freedom in Christ because that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about where we make the choice, not God making the choice through us. Okay, when we're surrendered servants to Christ, he, he controls us, he does the actions. Okay, Galatians 2.20, James 4.7. James 4.7, submit yourselves to, then to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. Okay, submit yourselves to God means he's in control. It means stop trying to be of free will. Let God be your slave master and you the slave. But anyway, go to Google. Try to find a single verse about choice to choose God about free will and all you will find you will find you will find no verses at all this shows we can choose God over Satan go go Google and you'll see what I mean because the truth of Christ is in the word and if it doesn't say free will choice to choose God over Satan it doesn't exist God chose you or he didn't choose you Again, I wrote an article on this, on, you know, real briefly, how can God choose someone not others? That has sort of been an unanswered question for thousands of years. I think I developed a theology based on Romans 8, 28 to 30, which clearly shows that the word foreknowledge has been misused. It, the word hasn't, the word has stayed the same, but the interpretation of it has changed through time, which has led to this idea that there's no explanation for why God chose someone not others. There's surely an explanation. Because God had pre-election knowledge of the soul. He cr created souls, analyzed them. He created all souls that could possibly exist. And of that collection, only some were suitable to put his spirit into. He chose those and not the others. Anyway, that's in uh, on my website. Just go to uh, Theology Hash, top, top right, Metaphysics section, God's pre-election knowledge of the soul. But anyways... The Bible is loaded with references to making choices and implications that, you know, you should initiate a choice or so forth. But it doesn't say that you're doing it. When it says in James 4, 7, submit yourselves to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. It doesn't say that you're doing the submitting to God and the resisting of the devil. It's just stating something that should happen doesn't say freely choose from your own consciousness to submit yourself to God and resist the devil. No, it just says submit to God, resist the devil, and you will flee. It's almost like a, a description of a, a blueprint 
of the nature of a of a salvific Christian. But then there are verses that say do that do refer to choose. Doesn't mean that you're choosing. What if something has control of your consciousness, like Satan or Christ? And this the Bible says choose. Well, you're not doing the choosing. And there's many verses throughout the word that refer to the perishing being controlled by Satan and the saved being slaves for Christ. So that would imply the choice isn't being made by you if the Bible refers to making a choice. Like in this verse here, which to my knowledge is one that's always used to refer to humans as having free will. And let's look at it carefully. It does not say that. It says the opposite. Look at the verse here. It's Joshua twenty four fifteen. I'm on openbible.info. You go look up Bible verse lists, and it's always one of the first three sites, four sites or so on Google, compiling verses about a topic. And I just looked up free will. And it's the second verse showing up. Look at the first verse. Proverbs 16, 9. The heart of a man plans his way, but the Lord establishes his, step, his steps. <laughs> that means you may have ideas of where you're going, but you're not controlled by you. Okay, so most of these verses, you look through these verses, they talk about non-free will. But look at Joshua 24, 15. It's ESV on this list. And if... It is evil in your eyes to serve the Lord. Choose this day whom you will serve, whether the, the gods your fathers served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in the land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Where in that verse does it say you choose? Choose God over Satan. Anywhere in that verse. Nowhere. It refers to choosing between two gods. Again, that may or may not be your free will choice. Relevant is it does not say choose God anywhere. There's no free will referred to in here. It doesn't say free will. It doesn't say choice of choosing God, that is. It says you can choose between these two illusions. The gods want Some gods are these other gods. But for us, we serve the Lord. It doesn't say chose the Lord. So why is this verse listed under free will? There's nothing about free will in it. Look at the third verse, John 17, 7. If it's anyone's will to do God's will, he will know whether the teaching is from God or, what, or whether I'm speaking on my own authority. That proves the whole point right there. If it's your own, either the words are from God or it's your own authority. In other words, sin. If it's your own authority, that means that's like Eve. Then you're calling the shots. That's the life of sin. That's not surrender to Christ. That's not Christ controlling you and you being the mind of Christ. And look at the first part of the verse. If there's anyone's will to do God's will, well, it seems to kind of sound like something like you're choosing God. But it's not what it says. It still reduces to God's will. And since it is, is that will your free decision coming from you? Because that verse sounds like it's coming from God, not from you. You know, if you go back and look at Genesis 3, there's no reference to free will anywhere in, in 3 6, where Eve makes the move to sin. Well, you see, is Satan trying to trick her? And then in 3 6, something new that Satan wasn't talking about is suddenly in Eve's mind the idea that the fruit is beautiful. He says you can eat it. And God's wrong and you won't die. And then she's like, okay. But then all of a sudden a new concept specifically comes from her. Because that's where sin comes from, from inside a person. Uh, Mark 7, 15 proves that. Like that was the focal verse I used in that other article, Sin and Nothingness article. But there's a new concept, the concept of beauty. She was enticed by desire. James 1, 14 to 15 says desire leads to sin. It doesn't say Eve chose that. It just says it was suddenly inside of her. When she sees that the fruit is beautiful, pleasant to the eyes, that's a new concept introduced in Genesis 3, 6 that was not there previously. And, is, and like that discusses there, and philosophers for a long time have noted a choice is a contradiction. A, a free will 
event is a contradiction. It's super, or it's supernatural. You can describe it one or two, either one of those ways. So the best thing to just say it wasn't there and then it was. There's some, some evil in the mind that wasn't there and then it was. But speaking about Eve, she was like God, but then her mind entered a state of sin. Did temptation first set in and then she sinned? I don't know, because it's at three. She was clearly being tempted before. And temptation is different than sin. They're two distinct things. And it's very clear in 3.6, we note, right at the apple eating event. So it's as if uh, it's a state of sin. Now, 3.6 doesn't say that she f it was free will choice. If you are saved by Christ, you do not have free will. You are free in Christ. But that's not free will. Free will is when you think you are God or when you are acting as your own free being, not controlled by Christ. Okay? Free we we didn't choose God. There's not a single verse in the word that says that. Very enlightening, amazing issue here. And there's a plethora of verses that say the opposite. Say that God chose us. Look at John 15, 16 here. You did not choose me, I chose you. That verse says. So, I'd like to propose an idea here. I'm going to propose the idea that free will does not exist for the salvific Christian and is only something that exists for the condemned, perishing, unsaved sinner. In other words, free will is a concept invented by Satan, which is not found in Scripture, which the entire church worldwide, even Calvinist churches, because Calvin was not a proponent of free will, even Calvinist churches talk about free, free will. It's free to choose Christ, or free will to choose Christ over the devil. There's not any, this is not in scripture. So if it's not in scripture, can I go forward and say it is of the devil? Yes. The idea that the human chose God by free will, a choice originating only from the human. That is something that humans do originates from them when they are not salvific, when they are perishing. And the idea that free will, this evil thing, is used to get us to God is a satanic creation, spiritual life with Christ. And what that would simply mean is that they were actually unchosen, not chosen from the beginning. Again, if it's not in scripture, but it pervades the church, I believe I'm at liberty to say it's a satanic creation. It's a product of 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. Satan is the god of this world, and his he acts by deception and lies. That's his tool. That's his his ammunition. That's his artillery. Where there are lies that pervade the masses is where Satan works. And here we have one. So what is freedom then in Scripture? Look at 1 Corinthians 7.22 right here, and that'll tell you. And it's the opposite of free will. Here's the verse. King James Version, for he that is called in the Lord. There there you go. There's your there's your choice. The choice is the Lord's. It doesn't say that he was free to choose Christ. No, he who the Lord calls. Let me start over. For he that is called in the Lord, being a servant, is the Lord's free man. Likewise, he is also called being free is Christ's servant. Freedom in Christ is being a servant of Christ. Freedom in the Lord is slavery to him. How many verses do we know of Paul saying, I am a slave for Christ? Every salvific believer is charged and fired up by that verse and knows what that freedom is. We don't have freedom as humans. Free will is not freedom. Free will is not freedom. Free will is the appearance of darkness and consciousness 
that emerges from oneself in some unknown supernatural process. Genesis 3, 6. Doesn't mean that, because we say if there's free will to choose evil, doesn't mean you have freedom. No, you're a slave. John 8, 34, everyone who's a sin is, is, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Free will is the true slavery, the negative kind. Freedom in Christ is a, being a slave to Christ. That's being free in the Lord. Humans don't have freedom. Only Christ is free. We are broken. We're only enslaved to sin. The only freedom we can have is Christ in us. Being the mind of Christ, Philippians 2.5. Being crucified with Christ, Galatians 2.20. I am crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. He says, I no longer live. But there's a second I referred to, but Christ lives in me. That's the new creation, 2 Corinthians 5.17. Let me read another translation, the NASB translation. One of the two churches that I work at uses often. 1 Corinthians 7.22, For he who is called in the Lord while a slave is the Lord's freed man. Likewise, he who was called while free is Christ's slave. Free will choice is a supernatural activity. Okay, free will is supernatural because it is not, it has no cause. This is what I wrote about in that article uh, that I put out on May uh, 3, Sin and Nothingness, that I referred to. It's right on my website. So what that article discusses is what many philosophers know. Uh, that free will is a contradiction. It cannot exist. It has because it has no cause. So it's an uncaused activity. Now, uncaused activities are typically categorized as being either contradiction or supernatural or something like that. Because things that are natural have causes for their existence. Okay, such as God is a cause for something's existence in the natural realm. Uh, or if I make a sound like I hit the desk right there, that you hearing that sound is caused by me hitting the desk. Okay, there's causes and effects. When something has no cause, we call it, we don't call it natural. We call it preternatural or supernatural.